I'm not nervous. <laughs> this is me. And yes, today I'm going to talk about space vacations. So does anybody ever think about what you would need for a space vacation? No hands? Oh, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> All right. So here, this is what we're going to talk about today, the science and technology behind living in space. There's a comparison between a hotel that embodies the theme of space. You have a nice little royal bathtub, you know. Then you look on the other side, and the guy's upside down. So you still have your plush pillows, your luxury. And this is what I feel should be the talk. Because do we really understand how to live in space if we were to? Who would voluntarily want to sleep upside down and not touch the bed? A part of my journey, there were the top three things that people said as to why they wanted to go to space. One was to experience microgravity. Another was to see the world from above, right? And the last one is to just have the experience of living in space. The question is, for me, is did anyone ask, how do you use the bathroom in space? <laughs> Would you still think it's a vacation if you knew you had to drink your own pee? <laughs> so this is, this is, hey, this is what it is. It's true. <laughs> So they, they actually go through a, a mineralization process. After you use the bathroom, it goes through the ECLSS machine for life sustainability and support. They filter the pee, add the minerals back in. They may be sometimes synthetic, of course, and then you drink it again. So yes, you drink pee. We're going to talk about what it's like to vacation on land versus space. We already kind of went through that, right? But we did not add the element of futurism. So next, the training needed for space vacations, because obviously you guys don't know that you have to drink your own pee. The next is experience of me, Lisa the Landstronaut, and what I've gone through to become an astronaut candidate. So now, for science and technology, we have robotics, we have artificial intelligence, advanced materials, uh, and human performance survivability. What do those things mean on land as we go into the future? You go to a hotel, let's say you want an order. You want a, you're hungry, you get your Uber Eats, you just click in your phone, right? I don't know if you guys have ever been on these recent cruises that involve futurism. They have lighting technology. They give you your own iPad. You're changing the ambience of the rooms while you're on cruise. They have gyros and stabilizers to where the cruise ship feels like you're literally floating on a hoverboard over the ocean. This is what's going on in today's world. So now, when we think about human performance and survivability, on land, what does that look like? Well, if I'm on a wildlife safari, do I have an emergency comm system where I can alert the, the travel agent or whoever that's responsible for my experience, or does it go straight to the emergency um, concierge? Does it go to something like what we know as EMT here, emergency management? So let's go into space. Okay, so we've talked about some of these things, right? Robot, concierge, let's go to the next slide. This is another depiction of what you guys think space is. Isn't it so cute? You have your space office over there, probably has a beard on the desk, you know, just. So another, another interesting fact is that astronaut ca uh, coffee actually looks like a Heineken <laughs> beard. <laughs> and in space, the digestive process, think about microgravity and drinking water. Do you really think that you're gonna just take a straw and a bottle and just, <laughs> this is good. No, the same thing with you eating. <laughs> Oxtails, jerk chicken, rice. Oh, you really think that? No, you're gonna be eating dehydrated foods, thanks to George Washington Carver. These are real things that maybe people don't really think about. Now, if I told you that you can't eat a really good gourmet meal, you can't press a button to get off once you get on, if I told you that you sleep upside down, or if I told you that everything you say from the moment you feel like you want to speak to your family on land, that everything would be recorded because you're having to communicate with the ground system and people have to make sure that the communication goes through. So you can't even, 
I'm not even gonna say it. Anyway, <laughs> moving forward, the training needed for your space vacations. Because I'm pretty sure you guys don't know how to float in space, do you? No, absolutely not. So here, we're gonna talk about living, maneuvering, and balancing. One thing is the food supply, right? There's all kinds of crazy stories of, of course, people from other countries, we will never say the United States, um, smuggling different, different things into space. It's, the stories get kind of funny, right? Or the invention of the fruit roll-up and why it exists in the first place. What if I told you that a fruit roll-up may have been invented so that the astronaut could literally do orbital mechanics and be able to eat because their hands had the gloves? What if I told you that the invention of diapers come from people doing orbital mechanics in space? If I have my toolkit and a drill and I'm replacing something like a nickel cadmium battery on the space station, how am I gonna be able to use the bathroom if it took two to three hours just to put the spacesuit on and it involved someone else to help me? This is what you guys like, you see the cool, white astronaut suit with the, with the red stripe, and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That's what they do. So just imagine holding your bowel movement <laughs> while you're floating, trying to sustain, right? And you have to think, 60% of anything that you buy, you spend in sustainment, you spend in fixing it. So this is why you see the famous astronaut suit. Who knew that? No one? Oh, come on, man. Okay, so <laughs> we've talked about maneuvering. Now let's talk about balancing. So one of the earlier astronauts allegedly um, was also a scuba diver, and they found out that doing the orbital mechanics outside of the space station actually was better for them because they had the scuba training, and that's when you go into fluid dynamics and ther thermal dynamics. Who knew that? Oh, one person. Bam, okay, we got one. All right, so now this is outside of the spacecraft. We talked a little bit about inside of the spacecraft. Has anybody thought about, um, let's say, communicating with Lynn and doing your office work, how you're gonna send and receive the information, or how much it costs to say an I love you on a note and send it through the metaverse of a space station? No one. This sounds like a costly vacation, doesn't it? <laughs> and then, let's say you spent all this money to go to space, and the first day you're there, you realize, I don't like it, I wanna go home. Like, can you really just press the eject button? Now think about all of the prior astronauts who have lived in space. Also, imagine being around someone that you absolutely had disdain for. Like, can you imagine, oh, this is the crew of five or six or seven or eight people, we're all gonna go to space, and one person is like, Rrr. and you're like, I'm gonna go to space with them for six months? You have to be kidding me. And how long is too long for a vacation? Some people pack up their whole van, and they're like, all right, kids, let's go, right? We're out. Get in the van, oh, we're gonna have a nice time, we're going to Yosemite, and we're gonna see the Mountains, everything's gonna be so great. The other one's pulling the other one's hair. The other one is like <laughs> pulling pranks on them. The other one locked them out the bathroom. Like imagine a family trip to space and they say, oh, it's not three days. And you can't use a tablet. So you guys have to really come together, learn this equipment, and then have a good time for about two months or for about 30 days. Some of you guys can't even stay in your family for three <laughs> I'm just saying, these are some of the things to think about. So what do you think so far? Space vacations, raise your hand. No, I didn't make it sound fun? Oh, come on. Okay, so we've talked about, believe it or not, a lot of these things, except for some of the main things. So the main things are radiation protection, right? Because they have cosmic and ionic radiation. They have a lot of other things that we may not know of. But the whole thing is 
from land to space. Some of the things that we experience in space actually afford to futurism on land. So let's say you had a company and you said, I want to go to space to learn how to make advanced radar systems. And some of the most futuristic technology is on the space station, and they leave it open to the public for you guys to learn some of the equipment while on the ISS. Would you guys want to go? All the money makers are like, yeah, I want to go. You know? Um, or maybe, let's say, um, you find out that neurodivergence testing shows that, hey, a person with your condition, whatever that may be, may be more survivable inside of another environment or the advancement of them being placed in another environment can help with the things that they go through on land. These are the things we never know, which is why we do many of the life sciences on the International Space Station. Did you guys know that? No, oh wow. Well, I'm your space woman, no. <laughs> um, so let's, let's talk about the journey. So for me, in legacy, I have been training for a very long time to become an astronaut. And many of these things that you've heard, I've actually gone through with working on rocket engines, working on payload satellites, all kinds of things. And I put myself through my own rigorous training to see if I really wanted to go to space. And after everything I've told you, I still want to go to space. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and lastly, I've also developed a virtual astronaut training program so you guys can come with me. <laughs> that is all. <laughs>